one of the things I've been doing to improve lately, and I've only been doing it for about three days now, is something I think I might have mentioned last week, is another one of those. And Dalio in Principles talks about another one of those. And if you think about it in life, you have a situation and you learn from that situation and you make a mental note of it, or even better, write it down. And then when that situation comes around again, it's like another one of those. And living in the country and dealing with a lot of, of people trying to get them to come out to the country and work on a house, there was a lot of another one of those. You know, my my roofers were heroin addicts. <laughs> I had one guy that was going to paint the house. And uh, this was actually before we were in, in the country. And he needed $350 to go buy a paint or whatever. So he, uh, he brought an old ladder to the house, sat it down, collected his check. And I never saw him again. And then when I asked the guy who recommended it, he said, oh, he must be back on the crack. I'm like, why did you tell me that ahead of time? Anyway, we call it, uh, we still have crackheads Bob's Ladder somewhere. And whenever we, we need to do something, it's like, go get crackhead Bob's Ladder. But anyway, I there's no guarantee, but I'm pretty sure the next time I have some work done on a house, it's going to be, wait, this could be another one of those, okay? Although we did get a pool guy. They give a pool guy five thousand dollars, and we thought we'd never see him again. And he did come back. We should have made sure we had an escape clause, like, okay, you want us to pay you by then, but when are you going to start? And if you don't start by then, do we get our money back, or what happens? So another one of those. So getting back to trading during your post mortem, this is another one of those epiphany things. If you lost in a trade and you say, I do that again in a heartbeat. That's one of those epiphanies that you're 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 getting close to making it if you haven't already made it. And if you won on a trade, you need to really dig down deep and say, was it truly skill or did I just get lucky? And that other epiphany that can happen is you won on a trade and instead of automatically chunking it up to chalking it up to skill. You say, you know what? I got kind of lucky on this one. I probably should not have taken that trade. I'm glad I have the money, but I'm not going to let the market teach me to take these crappy setups over and over again. Now, you'll never get it perfect. That's the thing about trading. And that's why the engineers sometimes have a hard time because perfectionists need not apply. I mean, if you're off by a fraction of a fraction or whatever on a bridge, it's probably not going to stay up very long. But in trading, you're never going to get it right, okay? But the bottom line is, what could you have done better? Now, as I said a minute ago, did you fail to adjust for volatility? And volatility is not what you want, but what's actually there. And many, many, many years ago, for trading markets, might have been trade hard back then. I wrote an article called The Myth of Tight Stops. Tight stops seem to be universally preached. Now we're, I'm talking about position trading now. But the reality is, a lot of times I've fixed a lot of people, so to say, fixed, so to speak. And just by telling them to loosen their stops a little bit, they'll show me a few of their trades. I'm like, well, your stop is within the normal volatility. And the market doing this is just going to take you out. And that's what I just was talking about with like the E-minis lately when the market, the volatility is starting to heat up a little bit in the markets. And yeah, you know, this is one of those things that's a real pain in the ass. You look at the market and it dropped 4% or a day or 3% or whatever the case may be. You didn't make anything or you got whatever chewed up. And at the end of the day, it's like, you know, if I had just held on, closed my eyes and held on, not so you want to do that, right? I would have actually made really good money. But instead of just kind of like holding and hoping, adjust that stop to the volatility. And if you have to, reduce your share size down. Now, hindsight bias is, is something that the behavioral scientists are all over and the behavioral finance guys are all over. And, you know, one of my problems with all these books is they all start to sound the same, and they all sound like, uh, what is it, uh, Kahneman and Tversky, Thinking Fast and Slow. 
do read that one. It's it's not a very exciting read. It's some really cool stuff in there at times, but it's it's a lot to get through. It's about that thick. And a lot of them have borrowed heavily from them. But there's a lot of good stuff in there if you could just, you know, work your way through it. But hindsight bias is one of the things they often talk about. And when you're looking back in time, as you do in the pre in the postmortem as opposed to the time travel forward in the pre-mortem, right? But when you're looking back in time, you will have the benefit of hindsight and you have to be careful with that. But what's amazing is you're gonna see things that were plainly there that you didn't see at the time. And that might've been because you had some FOMO working before you went into the trade. And then once you were in the trade, you were kind of stressed out because of all those things we talked about earlier because of the two U's, your different parts of your brain working. By the way, the neurology I'm talking about tonight, the, the beauty of learning a little bit about, about neurology is that the we all have a, a bit of a shared psychology when it comes to trading. And it's hard for a lot of us to admit that, but we we really do. And that's kind of hard to wrap your head around, but it's a little easier to wrap your head around a little neurology because we all have kind of the same functioning brains. I guess we, we all have the same type of functioning brain, unless there's something wrong with you. <laughs> and uh, it, it, it operates in a certain way where before the trade, it operates a certain way. During the trade, it operates a different way. The, like I said, the old brain is quick to cause you to do stupid stuff okay it also keeps you alive right and embracing these things and learning these things really help now at the least is there anything blatant when you're looking back that was that's plain now plain to see now that wasn't there in the beginning and at the least take a look at the crash course on stocks left and i just grabbed this frame out of that if you look at the trading quick clips on my youtube channel again youtube.com slash c slash dave landry this was a presentation i did a while back and i parsed out this slide here's a few things to look for when you're dealing with stock selection and as i've said ad nauseum i spent 14 hours on a stock selection course which i need to probably redo i probably re would, would put the same exact thing back in it again i don't think anything's changed content wise in fact th this slide comes straight from it the only thing that would change would be maybe a little bit better audio a little bit better video add some fresh examples but other than that it's pretty much the same but anyway just as one example for instance it's like this right here you know first pull back up to base breakout is pretty pretty damn good pattern to trade but a lot of pe times people will send me a stock that looks like this. It's it's broken out, but it's come all the way back in and they want to trade. It's like, no, it's back in a range, okay? Now, one thing I've been really cognizant of lately and, and documenting as much as possible is what thoughts or anguish did you experience during and after the trade and and you know i guess with tonight's presentation maybe even before the trade needs to be added into that and that's where i started coming up with all this like i've been saying another one of those and all the things i've been talking about lately and can these become a procedure or do these need to become a procedure okay and is there anything that could help you with these issues, okay? And I'll give you, for instance, if you go in and watch some presentations that I've done on the Holy Grail hunting, and again, you could find the quick clips. And if you find a quick clip you like, or like it, of course, and like this video if you like it. Uh, and if you don't like it, go have no fun somewhere else. <laughs> but if you go in and look at the quick clips, I talk about the Holy Grail days, and a lot of the research I was doing there was like, you know what? Don't get chewed up in these narrow range bars. Wait until you have about 50% of the recent range. And I can get the actual formula that I'm using on my trading station and post it in Facebook. 
and I've talked about it in those older presentations. But I know that unless I have about 50% of that prior range, a, a, a small range, a wide range bar, sorry, is going to start with a small range bar that got a little bigger. And where what I'm getting at there is, let's say the market just has a little bar about that big and goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And you're looking at those flickering ticks, it looks like the bars are this big, right? And you're like, oh, here comes a bear market, there goes a bull market, you know? But the reality is at the end of the day, you're doing your post-mortem when you got chewed up and you're looking back and going, oh man, it's just a little inside day. And that's another thing too, inside days. If you're doing some intraday ETF trading, try to avoid the ones where it's an inside day, unless of course that range appears to be expanding. That's kind of a la Toby Crable type of stuff. Anyway, not enough time to get into all that tonight, but the videos are out there. So through recording, your thoughts and your anguish during the trades. And, I, and anytime I yell the F, the F word, I almost said it out loud. <laughs> anytime I yell the F word, I write down in my trading journal that I wrote, that I yelled the F word. And guess what? When I just kind of follow along and do what I'm supposed to do, number one, I'm, I'm not always, but often profitable. And two, I have zero F-bombs. If I'm dropping F-bombs all day, then I'm doing something wrong. And maybe there needs to be a procedure for that. And by the way, you know, what I was kind of skirting around there or, or kind of backing into by accident, it's kind of like, we're all excited about a trade. And a lot of times you kind of have to think about the opposite. What would stop me from taking this trade, okay? How can I eliminate more bad trades? And of course, you always wanna be positive, right? I was gonna be a pessimist, but I figured it wouldn't work out. <laughs> right, what a W. But you always wanna be a positive, positive in general, but you also wanna seek out and play devil's advocate, like when does these things not work, okay? So I know the S&P is doing this. So you haven't seen me, excuse me, recommend many core trades, core trend trades in a while. Why? Well, there's no trend, okay? You can't catch a tan if the sun isn't shining, as I wrote in the layman's guides to trading stocks. And you also, what's the also there? Yeah, you can't catch a tan if the sun isn't shining and you can't catch a trend if there is none. Now, I'm a big fan of asking questions. And as I've said before in presentations, I think it might have been the Stock Torch presentation for Stock Torch TV. I had a professor years ago in college, and he was a big little Asian guy, but he was big on asking questions. If you don't know the answer, ask a question. And it really stuck with me. And a lot of the things that are just, you know, written down over the last few days, and I'm, I'm working into another one of those possible procedures, is just asking questions. And I don't have the answer for all this. And, and you know, guess what? As a trader, you're never gonna have all the answers, but you're gonna get it more and more and more over time. You know, it's kind of like uh, a question might be, okay, well, if the range is less than 50%, when would it be okay to take that trade? and maybe it's an opening gap reversal situation or something like that. A couple of random thoughts regarding another one of those. I found it interesting when I was putting my notes on the computer and thanks to my screwed up hands, cubital tunnel and carpal tunnel and I don't know what else, I'm not gonna get it cracking. I've pretty much ruined my hands banging on these computers all these years. <laughs> I have a foot pedal now. I mean, you know, which I knew now, what I didn't know then. I wish I knew then what I know now. But anyway, so I'm using a lot more voice recording and things like that. And when you're saying things out loud, you realize how much you really do repeat yourself. And I've had a couple of things in these, another one of those that where I wrote down the same thing three or four different times. And I need to hear those things again and I need to heed them. And like I said before, I 
showed my wife a column once and she said, I asked her what she thought. And she said, well, you say a lot of the same shit. <laughs> and I was a little taken back. And then the next day I get emails from people asking me the same stuff that I've said a thousand times. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to keep saying the same stuff until you people get it. Well, maybe I'm doing the same thing to myself. I'm going to keep saying the same things until I get it too. One of the big things I've been doing lately is I, I decided to play a game. And I think it did that on Tuesday was the first day. And I said I would not look at my equity, although I was doing the math in my head. But I would not look at my equity all day, and I would only look at the charts. And to my surprise, I didn't micromanage myself out of trades. Now, Tuesday, if memory serves, was a nice wide range bar. I did the same thing today. And my life got a lot easier. I wasn't nearly as stressed out. I did free me up to do a lot more things during the day by doing that and i think this goes for the trend trades as well as the intraday trades and just make it a game and the game was don't look at the equity all day and see where you are and it's interesting today i thought i was having a a flat day at best and i thought i was losing money and then i actually saw the equity and it was it was it was pretty good okay i wouldn't you know it wasn't like i was it was thousands and thousands of dollars, like six, seven hundred bucks for a day trade or whatever. It's better than poke the eye. So I think it's some I think there's something there. And I've talked about this before. I've just never forced myself to do it. Uh brains are better suited for the caveman. That goes that's just the as you read more about neurology and especially the behavior of finance as it relates to neurology and all. Human kind has evolved, or, or the world has evolved, I guess, technology and all this other stuff has evolved rather quickly, especially the last 100 years or so. But our brains are still stuck back 10,000 years. And that could be bad for the trader. And I've talked about that in presentations too, just some random thought that I had tonight. 